My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The only shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fear. It's good to be here on this resurrection morning. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. God has certainly smiled upon us and he has allowed us to be here to celebrate his resurrection. Amen. Now you understand, before we get to a resurrection, there had to be a crucifixion. Yeah. He died one Friday, but got up one Sunday. Amen. Yeah. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord. The choir's going to come. This mission is coming. Lead us in praise and worship.
to allow us to wake up and sleep, Father. We see the light there, Father. We're not stuck in the darkness. And we know coming to you, dear Father, means prayer changes things. We ask for your many, many blessings, dear Father. We thank you for your many, many blessings, dear Father. Too many to count, dear Father. We ask, dear Father, to bless this day because it's the day we celebrate of your death and resurrection. We ask, Father, that you bless Pilgrim. Pilgrim is coming along just fine, dear Father, just because of you. And we ask, dear Father, that you continue the best this church. We ask prayer this morning for our leader, our shepherd, the Reverend Dr. Lawson. We thank you for bringing him to us, dear Father. We ask that you strengthen him as he walks forward, dear Father, for the vision he has for Pilgrim. A vision that you have implanted in him, dear Father, to continue to lead us. We ask prayer this morning for the sick and shut in. Touch each and every one, dear Father, and give them what they are deserving and what they need. We ask, dear Father, that you bless this congregation. All of those who came out this day, dear Father, whether they had difficulty or however they got here, they are here to honor you, dear Father. We ask that you bless all of our uh, leaders here at this church and those who are trying to bring a better, better church. We ask to continue blessing. We ask you for blessing for just being alive, dear Father. Bless our families, touch our homes, touch our bodies, dear Father. We have a lot of here that are sick, but they came anyway. So, Father, enlighten us. Bless the service, dear Father. These blessings we ask in my name. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning, children and guests. Uh, would all our guests please stand? No, we have visitors. All right. Good morning. We'd like to thank everyone for coming out for Resurrection Sunday today. We hope that you enjoy the service. Sit back, relax. We have a great pastor. You are very, I know you enjoy the sermon, so just sit back and relax and enjoy yourself. And please come back as soon as you can. Pilgrim announcements, prayer list. Please pray for visits, send a card, or call for the following persons. Sister Charlotte Foster, who's here with us today. Amen. Brother Curtis Harrison, Brother Eugene Harper, Brother Savars Hodo, Sister Ora Smith, Brother Melvin Stewart, Sister Isabel Wilson, who's here with us today. Brother James Garland, Sister Barbara Harper, Brother George Harper, Reverend Raymond Payne, who's also here today. Amen, amen. Sister Purity Snelling, Sister Cora Walker, and Reverend Joseph Woods, who's also here today. Amen. We're also asking for prayer this morning. Sister Stephanie Morris requests prayer for her niece, Sister Janet Cooper, and friend brother Antonio Shelton. All Tides Sunday, April the 7th. This is a day when all members are encouraged to tithe. It's always re rewarding to see how God blesses those who give to him. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here was said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, then there should not be room enough to receive it. All ministry weekend. April 13th through the 14th, Saturday and Sunday. Pilgrim will be celebrating all ministry weekends. More information will be provided soon. Pilgrim's 118th church anniversary. May 19th, Sunday, May 19th, Pilgrim will celebrate our 118th church anniversary. Each member is asked to give a $200 assessment and all at once or in a cave prior to the anniversary. The color this year is blue, any shade of blue. So more information will be provided soon. Thank you. Let the saints of God say amen. amen. Say amen once again. Amen. I'm so thankful to our Christ for another day, another Resurrection Sunday. Amen. 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 Anybody glad that Jesus is alive? Amen. Come on, you better look at me, baby. I'm glad he's alive. And he lives in me. Amen. Amen. Thank God for this day that the Lord has. And we certainly thank God all of our visitors who are here worshiping with us. Praise God for you for coming. And you certainly I'm thankful for my family being here with me today. Amen. 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 My son, my daughter, and my grandson. Amen. Amen. He ain't going to act right now, so I'm going to bring you to the altar after a while. <laughs> we thank God for all the love you. Amen. We certainly thank God for the good one who participated with us on Friday in the Good Friday service. We thank God for your support as well as this morning at the Friendship Church. Amen. Thank God for your support as well. Listen, this is the last Sunday of March, amen. 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 It was me, my birthday in at midnight tonight. Wow. Amen. Amen. But we're going to begin April with the band, amen. Uh, first Sunday, we want to want you, everybody, to be a part of All Tithe Sunday, amen. If you have never uh, tithed, amen, you don't know the blessing or the benefit amen. in giving God what God has asked for us to do, amen. And his word is true. He said, if you do see, I will open the windows of heaven and pour. He didn't say sprinkle. He said, pour. You are a blessing, singular. That the one blessing you won't have room enough to receive. Amen. And I, I'm encouraging everybody to get on board and uh, to be.
be a part of it. And I promise you, when you do it one time, it will become a blessed habit to do it all the time. Amen? Amen. So we certainly encourage you to do so. But on the second Sunday, I want you to be a, all of our ministries. We're going to have all ministry day that Sunday, which we have, that Sunday and, and that weekend. We want you to uh, set up a space over the overflow, even downstairs, and uh, set up area. We want our members who are not involved in any ministry to go and, and be led of God and see what we're offering so that you can join and be a part of the work of the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I, I'm like... Warren Wisby says that not Warren Wisby, Rick Warren says, no, nobody that became a member of the Saddleback Church sit down and do anything. Amen. There's something for everybody to do. Amen. And we're talking about the work of the kingdom. So we are looking forward to all of you taking part of our ministry, the ministry we're offering at, at the Pilgrim Church. And we're going to set up space that you can go and look and be led of God and pray where and see where you can serve best as we advance the kingdom of our Savior. Amen. Amen. Certainly, we're looking forward uh, in the month of May, our 118th church anniversary week, and they have, uh, we've been talking about that more in the days and weeks to come to make sure you be involved, be a part, and participate in our church anniversary. But I want to mention this because that on April 27th, I want you to mark this down. We have, you make sure to have it happen now. We're going to have what we call a mental health symposium. Amen. We are preparing for it, and a young lady by the name of Micah Morgan will be here to share with families uh, and our young people because what we are seeing in our black community is the suicide rate is really increasing, particularly among our black young men. Amen? Amen. And she is coming to not only provide information, but to, uh, to answer questions, but to help us to receive the tools that we need to help facilitate this area of interest. Amen? Amen. And with that being said, because we're going to focus on mental health, uh, the month of April, I'll begin a series of preaching on mental health. Amen? Amen. And what I'm, I believe I'm calling I have something on my mind. Amen. Amen. So we want to spend some time addressing these issues. But there, there's an individual in the Bible that suffered from several things uh, with regards to that mental health. Amen. So we want to address a few of those things, and we're going to end that month with that symposium. We're looking forward to that. That's going to be April 27th from 11 to 1. We, we certainly we want you to put them on. We, we're going to send information out to our churches. We want everyone and to be involved and everyone to participate with regards to what we're looking forward to. But let's be proud. We're good to see all of you. We're sick and shut in. Good to see all of these. Sister Foster back there. God bless you. Amen. Amen. All of you. Good to see all of you here on today. We're going to continue to pray uh, for those who are sick and shut in and bereaved and pray that God provide us with strength to keep on keeping on. We get ready to go to God in prayer and Reverend Woods prepare himself to lead us in prayer. We want to pray that God will just give us strength to, to keep pushing. And those who are requesting special prayer, we believe by faith that God will meet us where we are, guide us where we ought to be. He is a prayer hearing God, isn't he? Yes. Boy, y'all slow today. I mean, he's a prayer hearing God, isn't he? Yes. Amen. Boy, y'all gonna make it rough for me today. Amen. Amen. I'm, I think y'all too dressed up. Amen. Amen. Let the light behold today. Amen. Amen. Let's come to the all ten point.
Deus não vai te calar. My help. All oh, my help. Coming from the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength. Give us the serenity to accept 
Except the things we cannot change. Give us the courage to change the things that we can. But most of all, give us the wisdom to know the difference. And oh, Father God, I'm just a nobody. Try to tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody. Let the church say amen. amen. Church say amen.
that's for us, though. Amen. Let's jump about here and walk. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We praise God for you and everybody that, that's here today. Praise God for you. I look, look at London coming in with her church hat on. Amen. She knows she was. Amen. She knows she was. She can't tell her nothing.
you fresh for all that you have done. We thank you, God, because you live. Now, God, as we come to tell this story once again, I pray for us that you take me out of self. Speak through me, talk to me, give me strength and power to proclaim your word. Hide me behind the cross so that the saints can see me and not me. For I realize I'm helpless without you. Hold these lips and clean and say what you have to say. We don't have word. They might speak to our hearts and today. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Break me, melt me, mold me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Let the words in my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name.
on my bow tie, amen. I just don't know how to tie one, amen. 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 Chapter 28 of the Gospel of Matthew. And I want to read verse 6. And we will look at the first verses prior to them. I want to read today verse number 6. Matthew 28. Verse number 6. Choice put the verdict in the hands of the people. Yeah. And 
told them either you choose Jesus, our master, or you choose Barabbas, who is a murderer. Needless to say, you all know the story. They chose a murderer over the master. They sentenced him to die by way of crucifixion. Yes, uh, they beat him, they slapped him, they plucked his beard, uh, they mistreated him, but, but as the song said, he never said a mumbling word. I need to tell somebody, in case you let Friday get past you, I need to tell you, he died. They buried him in a barber tomb. He stayed there all night Friday, all day Saturday, and all night Saturday. But according to the time frame of the text, it's the first day of the week. Sunday has come. It's the first day of the weekend. And according to the evidence, according to what we see, the tomb is empty. Why is the tomb empty? I know they just buried him before being caught by the Sabbath day. They had to hurry up and give him a, a makeshift burial because they couldn't do nothing when Sabbath came. They, they buried him, but, 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 the, but what is the tomb is empty. In fact, someone has spoken in the text verse 6 and he is not here. He is risen. If, if they bury him before Sabbath, then there ought to be a body somewhere. But, but the tomb is simply. Let me give you three quick principles that we're going to leave here rejoicing. There are three reasons why the tomb is in number one, because it was prophetically spoken. That the saints said prophetically spoken. Look at verse 6. It says, he is not here. He is risen. Now, here it is, as he said. Which means, because, because the angel said this, it, it implies that, that Jesus had to tell his followers that, that he was going to die and be raised before he died. Are, are y'all here? He had to tell him. In fact, uh, in fact uh, Mark, Matthew, Mark had, in, in Matthew's gospel, Matthew chapter 16, uh, verse 23, and uh, you have uh, 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 Matthew 17, you have also Matthew 21. Jesus told the people on several occasions, on them three occasions, particularly, he says, I'm going to suffer, I'm going to die, but he also said, I'm going to be raised. Are you all with me here? He told, he told them, he prophetically said, this is going to happen to people. When you look in John chapter 2, verse 21, it says, he told them, I'm going, they're going to destroy the temple, but in three days, I'm going to raise it up. I want you to pay attention to the destroying and the raising because Jesus, he had to comfort the ones who were listening to him when he told them about his suffering, death, burial, and he had, to, he had to comfort them. That's why you have John 14, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Do I have any help with that? If you believe in God, believe also in me. He had to comfort their hearts because they were troubled by what he said to them. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to die. But he didn't. He told But I'm going to be raised the third day. Now he, that's him comforting those who were following him. But then on the other hand, you have the accused. Who weren't as spiritual as those who were following Jesus. Because when he said, I'm going to destroy the temple and raise it today, they were assuming he was talking about the gathering place, the, the temple, the, the place they gathered for worship. They were focused on the building. They, they, the building had become a shrine to them. And, and he, he, they thought he was talking about destroying the temple in Jerusalem. But Jesus was trying to let me know. I my body is going to be destroyed. It's going to be buried, but it's going to be raised up on the third day. It was prophetically spoken now, by our Lord. Now you can you can say that perhaps the first half of the prophecy has been fulfilled because he did suffer, he did die, 
and he was buried. Yeah. The question that's on the table is, uh, did the latter half of the prophecy come to pass? He said he's going to destroy the temple. And wait, has the temple been raised? That's the question that has he has, he has, has the third day come for him to be raised from the, I'm here to tell somebody he's no longer dead. I, I believe I'll have some help in the house. I said he's no longer dead. I serve a risen Savior. And because he said that he was going to rise, I'm here to let somebody know he is alive. The, the tomb is empty. Because it was prophetically spoken. If, if, if I was to push this just a little further, I know it because he, he suffered because Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are in. And I wonder if I'm talking to anybody here who don't mind being a witness to testify. I'm here to worship right now because he gave his life for me and he got up for me. That's why in Sunday school back in the day we used to sing a little song that he rose. He arose. He arose from the grave. I don't know that. He arose from the grave. Somebody here ought to know that our Savior is alive. Not only was it prophetically spoken, but the text also shows, second of all, it is presently stated. Look at verse 5 and 6. It is presently stated because it is revealed. Verse 5 and 6 says, As the women were approaching the tomb, the angel start talking to him. Oh, oh, oh y'all with me here? As they're approaching the tomb, the angel got the talking with him. Hear me now. I, I like the way Pastor Mix, uh, the Gospel of Mark presents this. Because the Gospel of Mark reveals that they were talking with one another on their way to the tomb. Because while they were coming to present, uh, to anoint his body with spices and ointment, uh, they asked themselves a question. They said, who's going to roll the stone away? Are y'all with me here? That's an interesting because, because how else would they get inside the tomb to anoint a body, but somebody had to roll the stone away? Are y'all with me here? They, they got the talking going. And see, they, they, this is it because uh, each three of the four Gospels present this narrative in different ways. Because Matthew says only one angel came. Mark says only one angel showed up. But Luke says two angels showed up. Whether it's one or two, an angel was there to talk to the women as they were come up to the tomb. But look, I love this. I love this. I love this because, watch, watch me now. I love this because, uh, look how the angel makes his entrance. Matthew records angel uh, coming down through an earthquake. Earthquake shakes the foundation, but the angel comes down and rolls back the stone, but then sits on the stone that he rolled back. Here, I'm not making this right here. He sits on the stone and rolls back. He said, I know why you're here. And the one thing, why seek the living among the dead? He said, he is not here. Dinner. Just give me a minute. He is not here. He has risen. He has confirmed the prophet just as he said. Are you with me here? Now, that allows me to say that whenever God gives his word, he will keep his word. I believe I got a witness in here who don't mind testifying myself. There's power in the word. Does anybody here know there's power in his word? 
wonder working power, healing power, liberating power, heart fixing power. There's power if we may go back on our word, but God will keep his word. He said through his word, I'm going to die, I'm going to be buried, but I'm going to get up on the third day and we all It was presently stated. It was prophetically spoken. This is what do me. This is what do me. But back in time, the fact. These women were coming to the tomb to anoint his body. But they didn't know he was already anointed. Because when Mary broke the bottle of alabaster oil in, or no, poured it on his feet and wiped it with her hair. He said, she's getting me ready for my burial. What they were coming to do was already done. And so they were there. So the angel had to tell him, he ain't here. He done got up. And here we are in 2024. We are still celebrating the fact that he got up. And, and can I pause and say the reason that I worship right now is because he got up. I don't come to church to play around. I don't come to church to just look and see what you have on. I come because he got up. And because he got up, I have a funny feeling that. And as Nick just mentioned that, my worship is for real because I know he lives and he lives in my soul. Look at somebody and tell him he lives in my soul. Tell him he walks with me. He talks with me. He, he tells me. I
He is not here. Here's the shout. For he is risen. As you see. Here, here, here's another part you ought to get happy. He, he extends to them an invitation. He said, the angel said, come. Come. You, you, you've heard of come before, haven't you? Um, Matthew 11, 33, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. And here he said, come. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. Huh? That's verification. In other words, in order for them to go and tell, they had to go and see what they didn't see. In order for them to go and be a witness, they had to see what they didn't see. Okay, okay. They saw, give me now, a tomb, a, 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 a bowl that they were in front of the tomb. They saw an angel, and they even seen some guards who fled. Because the guards were guarding the tomb, but when they saw the brilliance of the angel, they became uh, as dead men. Yeah. Do I have any help in here? They told so in order for them to go in and be a witness, uh, they, they, they had to see what they didn't see. Okay. He said, come and see the place where he, in John's gospel, uh, they, they saw his his grave clothes and the napkin that was on his face in the place where his body lied. So in order for them to go and tell Peter, James, and John and the rest of the boys that he's alive, they had to go and tell them what they didn't see, but they saw. That, that's the proof that they had. Now, they, they may sound crazy saying we saw what we didn't see, but they had proof to tell he's not in the tomb. He's alive. Uh, uh, that, that's enough for you and I to go and tell even right now in 2024 that he is not in the tomb. He is alive. And I wonder if I'm talking at least 15 people in this house right now who don't mind being a witness along with me, I'll make 16 to tell somebody he is not in the grave. He is alive. Huh? You are the proof in and of yourself. Huh? If your proof is in how you live. Your proof is in the, your daily walk. Do I have any help in here? The proof is in who you are. In fact, look at somebody and tell them, I am a child of God. The proof is in how you praise and worship him. I wonder if I've got any witness in here who don't mind saying, my worship is for real. I don't have time to play when I come here. I've got to give him all of the glory. I have to give him all of the praise. And come on all right, uh, because uh, they had proof. Uh, they went and told the boys, uh, we seen an empty tomb. Uh, the very one uh, that we put in the tomb uh, is not there anymore. And come on all right. Uh, and I need to pause and say, because the tomb is empty. I have joy in my heart. Uh, Ain't going on right here because the tomb is empty. I have hope and I have peace because the tomb is empty. I have a reason to praise and worship him. Is there anybody here to have a reason to praise and worship him? Ain't going on right now. I praise him, number one, because he went to Calvary and died on the cross. Have I got a witness in here? They hung him high. They stretched him wide. They dropped him low. Somebody here know he died. Ain't gone all right. Somebody here know they buried him in a borrowed tomb. Why was it borrowed? Because he wasn't going to need it very long. He stayed there all night Friday. He stayed there all day. But I need you to help me here. Preach my sermon and turn to your neighbor on the left and the right and say, neighbor, 
We are saved because you shed your blood. But God, you got up that third day. Yeah. And because you got up, we live. In fact, God, because you got we have something to look forward to. That when we leave this walk of life, we can enter into your presence. Because you've prepared a place for us. And now, God, as we, the seed has been planted. The word has gone forth. God, I pray that you, God, in the name of Jesus, would touch someone's heart. That they may surrender to this risen Savior that we have been talking about. That they may open up their heart and invite him in. Oh, God, what a celebrated was a good gift to give to you today. Someone say yes, yes. to you right now. Yes. So we thank you in advance for what you're getting ready to do. It's in the marvelous, matchless, and mighty name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And the saints of God say, amen. amen. Stand to feet by the door of the Lord's house is open. I don't know who you are, but, but the Holy Spirit knows. He knows who you are and where you are, and he knows what you need. And I encourage you right now, before we sing any song, I want to, I want to speak to someone in this house. I want you to give consideration to your destination eternal. If you were to die right now, I'm not waiting, I said tonight, right now, where would your soul spend eternity? I hold on, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I want to tell you there's two places that they prepare. One is heaven, and the other is hell. Your choice on this side and your decision that you make will determine which direction you will go. But I will tell you as a, as a witness, 51 years ago, I made the best decision of my life in Sunday school to give the preacher my hand, give God my heart, give the church my service. And because I made the decision to make Jesus my choice. The first Sunday of May, May 6, 1973. I'll never forget it. Y'all can remember a whole bunch of dates if you want to. That's the best day that I can remember right there. I gave my, I went to the waters of baptism because I made a decision to make Jesus my choice. And I want to encourage somebody in this room right now, whoever you are, wherever you are. I don't know how the Lord is speaking to you, but oh, know what voice you are listening to and obey that voice. I'm talking about the voice of the Lord yeah. and surrender your life to him. All oh, to Jesus I surrender. Christian experience came from baptism. I will ever. Why don't you come? Love. Trust him. Oh, yeah. His presence. Daily. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Jesus. I surrender humbly at his feet. Uh -huh. Why don't you come? Bleed at his feet. I buy worldly pleasures, worldly pleasures, all forsaken. Why don't you come? Take me, Jesus. Me, Jesus. Take, take me 
anything that happened, I surrender them all. Why don't you come? My sister, my brother. You don't want to walk by yourself and ask your neighbor to walk with you. They can't walk for you, but they can't walk with you. Why don't you just sit around and give your life to the Lord? Surrender all. All to thee. Why don't you come? My blessed Savior. Why don't you come? Step out of faith. You don't have to walk alone. Ask your neighbor to walk with you. Why don't you come? Saturday at 10, amen, 
And be sure, before you leave, take some selfies, take some pictures, amen. Let's celebrate, amen. Celebrate this Resurrection Sunday, amen. amen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And the saints of God said together, Ah!